Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for coming again to our annual conference here in Switzerland. Well, our theme today is digitalization today and tomorrow. And when we talk about digitalization, we often mention disruption. And so as you can see, we have designed a seating plan for this conference in a quite unusual manner since we want you also to experience a little bit of disruption. So I hope you feel comfortable. But let's come to the topic. As our insurance world is under the potential threat of being disrupted, we must have the vision. The vision to recognize both the threats and the opportunity that digitalization can bring. The threats, such as cyber risk, and the opportunities, such as lower cost and innovative products, to protect our policyholders. Digitalization is already fundamentally changing the way we do business. And as the conference title suggests, it will keep on changing and challenging us. Two, two of us working in the industry itself, wherever we are, need to use the new tools at our disposal to develop cutting edge products to protect our customers in an even more uncertain world. And to deliver these products in user friendly and cost effective ways. But to be able to do this, we need to get the basic right. This means we need regulatory frameworks that ensure adequate consumer protection while allowing us to innovate and evolve. And to achieve this, we need policymakers with vision as well. In 2014, when the current European Commission began its mandate, we were hopeful that they have this vision. The announcements we heard were clearly forward-looking and promising. Among other things, there was talk about the Capital Market Union's action plan to trigger more long-term investment and the establishment of a digital single market. So let's look at what was, has actually happened. And let's begin with consumer protection regulation. Since 2014, the current commission has been putting the finishing touches to two pieces of legislation that were a legacy of the previous commission the package retail investment and insurance products, the BRIPS, and the insurance distribution directive, the so-called IDD. So, what has been achieved? Two sets of rules that, when combined with solvency to conducts of business provisions, mean consumer must compare products based on up to 161 pieces of information, some of which are duplicate. This is the outcome of the current silo approach, where each legislative text is discussed and approved in isolation. However, and as we all know, in a simple sales process, often multiple texts apply. Is the resulting information overload and duplication making things clear for consumers? I don't think so. The rules also mean that this information must be supplied in a paper format by default. And does this reflect the needs of consumers who shop online and purchase insurance on their smartphones? Let's look more closely at the PRIPS key information document, the kit. What we see is a six page document full of legal jargon and calculations that can potentially be misleading. In addition, it is simply not fit for a digital world. Again, I think that the kit does not reflect the needs of the digital consumer. But let me be clear. We are not calling for new rules for the digital age. We simply ask that policymakers make sure that existing rules are fit for purpose and fit for the digital future. To be effective in the future, insurance existing rules must first immediately address the duplication problem by clarifying that information should be provided once only. 
Second, address the overload issue to facilitate shopping around. And third, make use of the advantages of digital tools. For example, standardized information through the clever use of technology can help draw the consumer's attention to the information that really matters when comparing products. And at the same time, this technology can be used to ensure that additional information can be accessed easily by interested consumers. This is possible, as can clearly be seen in the insurance product information document developed by Insurance Europe. Another subject much discussed in our industry is InsureTech. The use of technology anywhere from product development through the distribution, customer service, and claims management. Both traditional insurers and the new starts up are working, and sometimes together, to harness new technological developments for the benefit of their clients. These innovations bring exciting possibilities. But consumers must be confident that they enjoy the same protection whether they buy an insurance product from a traditional insurer or from a startup. At this stage, we would seek reassurance from our supervisors that they are ensuring that the startup is treated consistently throughout the EU and indeed the European economic area. Our supervisors must ensure that we are not running an additional disruption risk by seeing one startup potentially treated in three different ways. In one market, as an insurer, subject to the traditional insurance legislation. In another market, as an insurance working in a pilot regulatory sandbox. And yet in another market, as a non-insurance and thus entirely outside insurance regulation with the risk that customers are not protected. Supervisors must ensure convergence of treatment. The overall objective for policymakers must be to balance safeguarding consumer protection and fair competition on the one hand, and ensuring the removal of regulatory obstacles to innovation on the other. As I said earlier, digitalization also brings risks. One prominent, one prominent risk that will be discussed today is cyber. Here our industry is in a fairly unique position. While these risks can impact us, they can also create opportunities to provide protection to the businesses and people who need insurance again against these risks. As the recent global WannaCry ransom attacks have shown, this is a very serious and immediate threat. These attacks alone target governments, health services, and companies around the world. The economic cost could reach billions of euros. Cyber risk is a growing threat. One group of analysts reported a 36% increase in ransomware cyber attacks in 2016. Despite this, many individuals and businesses still don't take cyber risk seriously. Some don't understand the risk exposure. Others believe it is the IT department's problem. As a result, many businesses are left unprotected. And this can lead to catastrophic consequences, as firms that have become victims of cybercrime have found out the hard way. Therefore, more needs to be done by policymakers to raise awareness about these risks especially among SMEs, to ensure Europe's cyber resilience. Insurers have a key role to play here, not only in terms of risk transfer, but also by helping policyholders in implementing adequate protection measures and in mitigating the effects of a successful cyber attack. However, the limited information currently available on cyber risk hampers the insurance sector's ability to offer cyber risk cover and related services. This is why we urge authorities to give insurance access to data on data breaches and cyber incidents 
which is scattered as a result of recently adopted legislation such as the General Data Protection Regulation in Europe. On that regulation, we were pleased that our messages were understood. The rules on profiling still allow underwriting to continue, and it also allows insurers to collect and process personal data in the important fight against insurance fraud. In addition, giving insurance access to data on data breaches and cyber incidents will be vital for insurance to increase their understanding of cyber risk and their ability to underwrite those risk more effectively. Another digitalization and data-relating topic on today's agenda is autonomous and connected vehicles. As an industry, we need the vision to prepare now for a world of self-driving cars in the future which will raise a range of new questions, for instance, in terms of liability. Before that, though, we need to create the right environment for cars that are increasingly connected. A fundamental question here is how all market participants can leverage the huge amounts of data these vehicles produce in order to benefit customers. Free access to road data and clear rules for the gatekeepers of data, be it car manufacturers or large platforms, these are required. This will help to ensure that the benefits of the data economy can be fully leveraged and that strong competition exists to benefit customers. However, car manufacturers are working on models where the car manufacturer will be the main getaway. Therefore, the European Commission must take action to ensure that drivers are the ones who control their data and not the car manufacturers. If drivers keep control of their own data, they can then directly and freely engage with their insurance providers without any artificial barriers. As I said before, in order for insurance to be able to provide innovative products in the future, we need to get the basic right. Last but certainly not least, this brings me to prudential regulation. Solvency II has now been in operation for nearly one and a half years. After years of reparation, we have had a smooth implementation, which now clearly shows the industry's high levels of capital. While Solvency II has succeeded in setting very high standards of solvency, risk management, and reporting, important improvements are needed to avoid unnecessary cost for our policyholders and to maintain our ability to offer long-term guarantees and to make long-term investments. We welcome the fact that the Commission is committed to using the Capital Market Union's project and the review processes built into Solvency II to make this kind of improvements. We look forward to engaging on this and to identify appropriate solutions. There have been first steps by the Commission and European legislation to realize the potential of the CMU, but for insurance, these steps have been somewhat timid, as they only bring more appropriate solution to between 2 and 5% of our portfolio. However, the incorrect treatment of our broader long-term business is not addressed in the current discussions, while all initiatives proposed by EIOPA, such as the one on the UFR, could worsen rather than improve solvency too. We therefore hope the Commission will have the vision to find suitable solutions. Our industry has put a great deal of effort into explaining our role as long-term investor and how this helps our customers and the economy. Policymakers have begun to recognize the importance for growth and stability of the insurance industry, which is Europe's largest institutional investor. Policymakers have also started to understand that insurers are not 
traders. In fact, we invest for the long term. Therefore, some important improvements are needed to solvency too to better reflect this. Work needs to start now. And we are asking the Commission to set up a mixed stakeholder expert group to discuss this very important and complex long-term investment issues. This will allow us, as the regulated industry, to provide direct feedback on the first effects on solvency II, to explain how they affect our business model, and to provide solutions for a broader discussion on addressing these problems. The Commission can help Solvency II to achieve its initial goals of being a strong risk-based framework. The European legislation can still ensure that our industry continues to take risk from companies and individuals. They can also ensure that our industry continue to offer long-term pension solutions. And EOPA can ensure very high levels of policyholders protection if Solvency II is applied in a converging way across Europe. What needs to be done now is to launch the necessary work stream to allow a deep and joint analysis of what works and what can be improved. Our industry clearly stands ready to contribute to this debate. So, let's come now to the end. My call today is for vision. The industry needs vision to respond to the new risks and to make the best use of new technology to meet the needs of consumers. And policymakers need to create the environment to support that vision. Thank you very much. So let's open the first session of our conference. We can certainly learn a lot by looking at what other industries are doing. So it is my great pleasure to introduce Anna Ibisha Imfeld, chairwoman of Vestiform. Vestiform is a family-run company that has been producing signage for 60 years. It has fully risen to the challenge of going digital. So Anna, please come to the stage.